You're listening to Change Your POV Podcast, episode 121. Presentations with them, or they would ask for something, and I would have no problem going into their office and going over stuff with them, telling them when they were doing something wrong. When I, when you get out and you go into that civilian world, it seems like the people, like the the CEO of the company or somebody high up the food chain, people won't go talk to. They're so afraid of that person as if they are untouchable. Welcome to Change Your POV Podcast, helping you navigate transitions in your life, like entering and exiting college or the military, changing jobs or careers, and providing you with the coaching and mentorship needed to help you advance in your personal or professional life. Sometimes all you need is to change your point of view. Now, here's your host, Eddie Lazary. Hello, folks, and welcome to Change Your POV Podcast. I am your host, Eddie Lazar, and I'm here with Ben Hattanton, and we are sitting down with Jeremy Paris. He is a 10-year Army veteran and the host of the Veteran Resource Podcast. He interviews veteran nonprofit organizations and other VSOs, or veteran service organizations. There are literally thousands of VSOs out there, each with a different mission. The one thing that they all have in common is that they all want to help veterans in their own way. Some might help financially, some might help emotionally, and some might help with homelessness, and and others might help by providing opportunity for veterans to serve their community and help others in need. Let's head on over to the interview. Check it out. I, uh, I was born in Montana. I grew up in Nevada, joined the Army, spent most of my time in Texas, and now I live in New Hampshire. Oh. oh, wow. Yeah, kind of <laughs> everywhere. That's cool, man. Back west. Back, to you. back west. Back west. I always hear, I always hear back east, but I never hear right? back west. So yep. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, that, so, uh, that's, my whole family lives in Colorado now, so oh, that's they're always saying too. back east. They live, uh, <laughs> they live in Lewis, Louisville and Boulder, so <laughs> they're right outside Denver, and it's freaking ridiculous, man. Yeah, I, I did some snowboarding out that way awesome yeah the skiing back west is a lot different than skiing back east back west. yeah for sure yeah <laughs> out west back out west east. out west <laughs> as i always say out west because <laughs> everybody starts here and then goes right. there except, <laughs> except, for Eddie. except for eddie that's right except eddie, for me yeah, yeah I, I migrated east how about that do you like the cold uh, i hate the cold who who loves who likes the cold I don't, right yeah, i don't i'm no. from buffalo I spent three years in Alaska. Ugh. I'm I'm pretty done with it. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> See, I was done with it too. I moved to North Carolina, then <laughs> Florida, and yeah. uh, then to Delaware, and now I'm back. So you're like, Shit. hell yeah. Get out, break out the snow shovels, kids. It's going to be a long winter. Yeah, yeah, even Annapolis is like, you know, it's once cold, it starts man. getting cold, mm. I'm miserable here, and I just want to go. Like, <laughs> I'll go down to Florida, hang out for a couple of weeks. I'll go out west, visit family. Yeah, I just gotta get away. Hell yeah, I I like Annapolis too though. It's good. It's nice there. Cool. It is. It's pretty cool. So, so how's this uh how's this podcast work? Um, well we have <laughs> a lot like the other one. It, <laughs> it already yeah. started like an hour ago. Yeah, we have no. we have no rules whatsoever. <laughs> no. Um, so I I listened to your I listened to your episode on cigars and sea stories, and I was like, now don't don't. Bennett, don't take this the wrong way, but not every guest that comes on Cigars and Seas, I'm interested in interviewing on my podcast, <laughs> right? Um, two different, I mean, we're, we're veteran-centric, but different missions, right? Um, Change Your POV really focuses in on not just not just military or veteran entrepreneurship, but, but also um, in, in basically expanding one's concepts, knowledge, perceptions about you know, about life as a veteran. Um, I struggled immensely when I got out of the military and had to learn a whole bunch of shit on my own. And I just, I finally got to the point where I'm like, you know what, I, I can, I could probably provide some new, you know, newly transitioning veterans 
with some information that I would have found valuable if I had you had a mentor or somebody to kind of coach me through that because you know as much as I'm sure the military tries with taps classes and other things let's just let's yeah. just be honest with each other that's just not that just doesn't cut it and um and so we talked to you know we we have a pretty broad topic or line of of conversations and topics that we cover and we've covered everything from PTSD to you know health and fitness to um, you know, different veteran centric resources that are available to, I've brought some guys on and we've talked about com- alternative therapies, man. Yeah. Combat mm. stories, alternative therapy. So it's just pretty much, I want to get you on here and talk about your show, your podcast. Um, I never heard of you and it's, it's crazy, right? We're, we're in this space essentially together. And I, right. didn't, I never heard of you until you came on Cigars and Seas, and I looked you up, and I subscribed to your podcast, and I've been listening to your shows, and, and I dig it, man. So um, if nothing else, we just I wanted to cultivate a relationship with you. And like Bennett and this boys over at Cigars and Seas stories, they say it's not about competition. It's about adjacent units, and the yeah. rising tide you know, r- raises all ships. And even though we all are speaking to essentially the same demographic – we all have our own unique way of presenting a message and, and reaching out to this very vast and growing network of individuals. So, so that's, that's kind of the story. That's the, uh, the genesis of Change Your POV podcast. Uh, it's been uh, – we'll, it will be a year at the end of this month that we've been, that we've been doing this. And uh, it's been a, quite the journey, huh, Bennett? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, podcasting – like once I decided to go into that and I didn't go into podcasting because I wanted to get into podcasting. Right. I went into podcasting because I came, I, I saw the hole in the marketplace, the, the fact that veterans didn't know about veteran nonprofit organizations. And I was like, there's gotta be a better way for them to find out. And I just happened to be listening to tons of podcasts at the time. And I was like, huh, what if I started doing this? Mm. And once I dove into it, it was like, it's that whole thing where like, you don't realize what's out there. And then once you start focusing on it, everything comes into view. Yep, exactly. And it's, it's like, wow, this is an entire world here. Right. This is cool. So what are some of the podcasts that you started listening to? So when I first started, let's see, internet business mastery, Yep. that's one of the, one of the oldest out there for. Uh, people that were doing online business. Uh, and then I found out about Pat Flynn, who got his start through Internet Business Mastery. Yep. I uh, then also heard about the eventual millionaire with Jamie Tardy. Yep. And then I found out that she, or then I learned about John Lee Dumas, and I found out that he got his start through Jamie Tardy. And so it was like they were all linked together. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was listening to, uh, uh, podcast answer man. And oh, we had, we had cliff on the show a couple weeks ago. Oh, he's awesome. I would, yeah. I'd love to connect with him. I mean, I'm in a bunch of groups that all of these people are in. I'm in, you know, different podcasting groups and closed Facebook groups. And I, I signed up for the internet business mastery Academy. So I'm a member of their group. I signed up for podcasters paradise. So I'm a member of their group. Cool. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know they're kind of like the the higher ups in the <laughs> in the division, yeah, if you will. So exactly. you're not just going, "Hey, Cliff, how you doing?" It's Jeremy. Hi, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's it's funny because we uh, so we had Cliff on and we talked about his journey of weight loss because a lot of people have him on the show and they talk about you know podcasting and how he got to start as a podcaster and everybody really knows him very well as a podcaster, but. We wanted to have him on the show and talk about how he lost, you know, you know, over a hundred pounds and, you know, his journey. So, so it was a very interesting yeah. episode to kind of peel back the onion and listen to that, to his story. It's very amazing. And then, then he gave us the, uh, his contact, his actual, his personal trainer, uh, is, a is a Marine. And, uh, so we reached out to him and had him on the show and kind of, he calls himself, I heard that. I heard that episode. Yeah. So he calls himself yeah. Cliff's personal, uh, hurt locker, hurt locker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was really cool. I mean, it's just awesome. You know, this thing, but I talked with him for a little while and he was like, dude, I, I, I don't, I don't even know what podcasting is. I, I keep hearing that Cliff is like 
a big time podcaster, but I don't even listen to his show. And I was like, and so it's amazing to me how this whole world exists, but so few people actually, I mean, don't get me wrong, hundreds of thousands of people listen to podcasts every day, but, but on the grand scheme of things, podcasting isn't, I mean, it really isn't that big. It's still very early on in, in its, You're right. its evolution. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, a, a couple of things there. And um, you, you were talking about, you know, going at a different angle with Cliff. And I love when you get an interview with somebody that everybody looks at them as this. And mm-hmm. then you talk about something else. And with, with Cliff, there's so many different things that I would could, could imagine an entire episode wrapping around, like the fact that he at one time was running 30 different podcasts right? Yeah. and and talk to him about the processes that he had to put in place to make that doable mm-hmm. or, you know, talking about uh, coming up with the idea for Lost where he was kind of doing like the talking dead, you know, just here, here's what happened in this week's episode and exactly. you know, yeah. different things like that. But uh, yeah, it's, it, it's pretty cool when you go at it from a different angle. Yeah. So I'm going to ask some questions tonight that may be different questions than you've been asked in the past. Um, but And it's going to be, one, a little self-serving from a podcaster's perspective. But two, I think it's going to add some value to those that are out there. Because um, I've had several veterans reach out to me through the course of, of Change Your POV podcast. And they all say... I'm really, I'm really intrigued by this whole idea in, I, of of podcasting. I think that I have a message that's worth spreading, or something that I would like to talk about. You know, could you help me get started? And I've I've helped uh, several individuals kind of, or at least point them in the right direction. Of course, I always, you know, direct them towards Cliff because he's the, you know, the end all be all in terms of starting a podcast. No one does it quite like he does. Um, yeah. but I really just dig the idea of opening up the canvas of this medium of communication and spreading a message because you can, you, you, you know, you can get on Facebook and you can stand on the top of a mountain and you can do all these other things, but podcasting is just a unique way of sharing a message. So throughout your journey, what's been a couple of things that kind of took you by surprise that happened or, or maybe changed your perspective and you didn't. You didn't see it coming or you didn't quite expect it. You mean as far as once I started podcasting? Yeah. Just to, you know, yeah, you started podcasting, you started interviewing people. And w- what were some things that have come out of that experience that you didn't foresee going when you first went into it? Well, one of the things that really, really took me by, by surprise was the fact that anybody that I would call up and talk to and ask to be on the show or even send a tweet to or send a Facebook message to, or however I reached out to these people, 99% of them would say yes and be all about it and be following up with me. Hey, when do we get started? What are we doing? What should I know about this? Like they were all in to be on the podcast. And I thought I was going to have to be chasing people left and right. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, you know, begging them almost. Yeah. I'm a new podcaster. And you know, uh, would it be cool if you came on my show? And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And wow. instead it's like, I, I mean, I got in the nonprofit, in the veteran nonprofit space, you know, organizations like team red, white, and blue and the mission continues and taps. And, uh, this week I'm going to have, um, Bill Roush from got your six. Yeah. So it's like the the big names in the game mm-hmm. are completely happy to come on the show and and to help veterans find out about them, and yeah, that totally took me by surprise. That's awesome. It's about taking it's about taking action and actually putting yourself out there. Yeah, and, that's right. And, and if you do that, see, you're gonna find that most of the time people are like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, and right. it's, and, and sometimes you need sometimes you need a little kick in the ass. Like for example. You're a podcaster, so you, be, you, you may be familiar with, uh, you've heard of the podcast, um, oh my God, it just slipped my head, um, oh, Manager Tools. You've heard of Manager Tools? I have not, no. Oh, so Manager Tools is one of the top five in the business uh, category of podcasts, and it, uh, the, the two main characters of, of that show are both West Point grads and uh, huh. field artillery. And I, and they, 
they don't really come out as veterans. That's really not their message. It isn't. Uh, yeah, they don't really talk about that. Yeah, that, it's not really. Mm. That's not, not really kind of their their forte. And and it's not even a veteran uh, nonprofit or for profit. It's just the company is Manager Tools, and their focus is um, teaching and training, you know, corporate executives and managers to be better leaders, better managers. And I started listening to them. There's one of my very first podcast that I ever really started to listen to. And I just gained so much value from listening to the podcast. Um, I would literally listen to, they had they have hundreds and hundreds of, of episodes. And I, if I were to tally it all up, I would probably say I've spent weeks of my life listening to that show. Um, and it's been mm. incredibly valuable to me. And it's a resource. It's a true resource. And that's what really got me thinking like, man, as much value of these as these guys have been able to provide to me, and it's been all free content. I just literally download episodes and I listen to them on my way to and from work, whatever. Um, and I was like, man, I wish I could figure out a way to provide that same value uh, to to other people that, that, are, that are looking for more information. And so they those guys were always been on my radar as some guys I would love to have on the show, but I felt like this, um, you know, kind of this imposter syndrome, like who am I to ask these guys? Like literally they, they, they are executive coaches for fortune 100 companies. You know what I mean? Mm, and yeah, the yeah. list of companies that these, I mean, this guy probably charges tens of thousands of dollars an hour in cons in consultation. I'm like, how am I, how am I going to get this guy? His name is Mark Horseman. And I was like, how am I going to get his, this guy on my, on my show? I always wanted to have him on the show. And Bennett's like, hey, man, uh, you know, he kind of put it to me as a, as a challenge to, to reach out and connect with some people. And, nice. and so I did. I reached out to him. I was like, he had a book that was uh, just coming out. And I was like, hey, here's who I am. Here's what the show was all about. And I've never heard him on any other podcast. I don't even know if he goes on other podcasts. And I, but I did. I reached out to him, and he said yes. And, uh, and we had him on the yeah, show. And and we listen to a lot of podcasts. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I've never and I've never heard him on any other yeah. podcast. So, it was really really cool to get him on the show and talk about his book. And it just goes to show you that you know, like you said, it you know, you you think you're going to reach out and ask people to come on the show and and you're going to get a little bit of you know, not not, you know, him and ha, but you know, some people are probably like, you know, who are you and and why would I want to do that? But what I found is is what you found in the exact opposite. People are more than willing to come on and share their message and share their story. And I just feel so honored to be able to bring those messages to the listeners of Change Your POV podcast. And, and that's why I wanted to bring you on the show is to share your story with the listeners of Change Your POV podcast. So I know by listening to uh, the episode that you did on Cigars and Sea Stories, a little bit about your background and your and your story, but could you give us kind of a brief rundown of your military experience and then your transition out and, and leading up to kind of where you are today? Absolutely. So I was born in Buffalo. And when I was 17 years old, I graduated from high school and immediately went into the army. And I started off in the reserves, but uh, <laughs> and I got sucked into personnel by the recruiter. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yep. Yeah, that that uh, enlistment bonus, fifteen hundred dollars to somebody who's poor and 17 years old is a million dollars. That's you know? right. And uh, and of course they split that up over like you know a billion years, so you get like a twelve dollar increase in pay that month, and you're like, oh, that's my bonus, huh? <laughs> so uh, so so anyway, I was personal. Here's seven hundred dollars, and we're gonna divvy the rest out over the next <laughs> yeah. decade. Oh, and we're gonna we're gonna tax that <laughs> especially tax since it. it's a bonus. Right at forty percent. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you know, the army was covering stuff, so. Living in Buffalo is pretty cheap. I was okay. <laughs> so, uh, but I was, I was reserves and my unit was closing down. And so my unit said, listen, you can go to another unit and drive all the way to Niagara Falls for drill, or you can go and try out with one of the other units in the same building. And one of them was the civil affairs battalion. And I was like, yeah, let me, let me try out with them. They're the real deal. And on my 21st birthday, I went and I did, went out to the field with them. I did land navigation and did weapons. I did uh, PT tests and ruck march and everything. 
and got done. And they said, hey, you pass with flying colors. We'll get you trained up and you'll be civil affairs. And I was like, yeah, thanks. But now that I've got a taste of this, I want to go active duty. I want to do civil affairs like every day. Mm -hmm. And they're they're like, yeah, all right, good luck with that. (laughs) And uh, went and talked to another recruiter, upstanding recruiter. And they said, ah, well, you know, you got to you got to go in as personnel because you're already trained that way. But then 30 days after you get in, just tell your commander that you want you want a 4187 and they'll switch you out to be, you know, civil affairs. No problem. And uh, so I went active duty and 30 days later, I went and talked to my commander who laughed hysterically at me. <laughs> yeah, bet. First sergeant laughed hysterically. Everybody else who was in the room was laughing. And they said, yeah, you're in a shortage MOS. You're not going anywhere. Wow. So I stayed in personnel for my, my whole 10 years that I was in and I, I was good at it. I didn't mind it, but I didn't want that cubicle life. So I decided to get out and I went into computers and for the next 16 years I was in a cubicle. Mm. <laughs> so, so having so that, that's, uh, that's having, the background. having that cubicle life while you're in, in the army, did that help lend itself to that change in, in, in atmosphere when you entered the civilian sector or not? Well, I think it did. I was really comfortable with people that were very high ranking. I would have to go over different presentations with them or they would ask for something and I would, you know, have no problem going into their office and going over stuff with them, telling them when they were doing something wrong. But when I, when you get out and you go into that civilian world, it seems like the people like the, the CEO of the company or somebody high up the food chain, people won't go talk to. They're so afraid of that person as if they are untouchable. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was able to walk into my new job and I was a DOD contractor still in the new job, but I was just doing computer work instead of, you know, doing personnel work. But I felt like when I, if I had a question or I wasn't, you know, happy with how something was running, I would just go and talk to somebody up the food chain and they would, they would recognize me and I'd end up moving up the food chain faster than a lot of other people. Yeah. Yeah. Then the networking is what I've, I found, I find that the, the one struggle that many veterans have when they separate from the military and enter the civilian sector is this art of networking and i call it the art of networking because there is a level of skill set involved with that it's more than just saying you know hi i'm eddie you know this is what i do this is why i work what do you do right um it takes some level and some effort of cultivating a relationship and maintaining and building on that relationship over time and so it does it doesn't always come very naturally to a lot of veterans because let's face it when we were in the military, we were, for the most part, really kind of uh, rated on our own merit, right? On the work that we were right. performing, the duties that we performed. You know, we we knew exactly what was expected of us. We knew exactly how many points we needed to get promoted and what the time and grade was and the different things that would constitute points for promotion, et cetera, et cetera. And then you get out into the civilian world and you know, what you need to do to get a promotion is completely like secret. You know, you have really no idea what constitutes. Right. It's not, it's not laid out. No, at it all. isn't. No, you might have your annual objectives or things like that that you're striving for that you're getting, uh, you know, getting rated on or getting scored on at the end of the, uh, at the end of the year. But, you know, even if you meet those objectives, that doesn't, always mean a promotion, right? There was there is no guarantee for promotion in the civilian sector. And even when you ask the question like what do I need to do in order to advance or to get promoted within this company, a lot of times you get a boilerplate answer from your manager that's just a standard answer that everyone's pro- required to provide through human resources or whatever. And it becomes right. very 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 convoluted. And so you're right, the the best way to really advance and the move your career within the civilian sector is has a lot to do with the relationships that you cultivate and, and the and the network that you have with other people. It's really about who you know and how you're able to add value to them. Absolutely. And as far as networking goes, 
most people, when you say networking, they have a completely different idea about networking than when I say networking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're thinking that you go to some stuffy event and you listen to some speaker and then you go around the room and try to hand out as many business cards as you can and, and tell people who you are. And then later on you go home and you send an email to every one of those business cards that you collected and you say, it was great meeting you. Uh, we should get together again and blah, blah, blah. And then after you don't hear from them for a month, you reach out to them again and go through all of your cards and do the same thing. That's not networking. That is, that's doing it all wrong. If you want to skip 15 steps, talk to that person, that specific person that you want to get to know and find out what it is they need help with and then provide it. Find a way through another connection that you have or jump online and, and do some research yourself to find out how you can solve this person's problem. And even if you don't have the big, huge solution that they're looking for, if you contact them and say, hey, Joe, uh, two weeks ago we were talking and you said that you were trying to you know, find a, a easier way to hire people, here's some things that I came up with. And boom, you've just moved up the food chain as far as people that that person wants to get to know better. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. And, that, and I totally concur with that. As a matter of fact, tomorrow I'm giving a, a workshop at a local university uh, to a bunch of veterans speaking about networking. And, and uh, I was asked to come give this presentation because of my one, my affiliation with the school, but two, because I'm a veteran and they wanted me to talk to these veterans from a veteran's perspective because they find, or at least they are, the, the school is being communicated uh, to by these veterans that they don't like networking events because they feel like they don't know how they're supposed to work, uh, what they're supposed to do during the event, what they're supposed to do after the event. It's a very foreign thing to them. Like you said, they hear networking event and they exactly what you described they see you know suit and tie pass out cards and then you follow up and then and it doesn't seem to really have the return on investment of time that a lot of people think that it, that it should right and so they want to understand how they can do things better and i really i really really concur with what you're what you're talking about in terms of seeking opportunities to provide value to others. And a lot of people think, oh my God, I don't have nothing to offer anybody. You know, a lot of people believe that you've got to be, you know, a famous author or, you know, you've got to, you know, have seven figures in the bank and you've got to own your own business or, or, or whatever, have a PhD at the end of your name in order to have enough credibility to provide value to other people. When in fact, I think the other struggle that veterans find themselves having when they get out is, they don't have as much worth or a sense of worth or value in themselves as they really truly do. Do you see that as well? I do. I do. And I think that people, people look at those things that you were talking about, whether or not they have a PhD or they're an author and, and things like that. And I think that if you, I don't know, if you look up subject matter expert, as you probably know, it's, just having more information, more knowledge about a specific subject than the people that you are addressing about that subject. So it's very easy to, to go into something as a subject matter expert. And like with my podcast, when I started the podcast, I was not a subject matter expert. But after I talked to a handful of these, these uh, nonprofits, I started to get a little bit of foundation under me. And as I kept going and going and I got up to 50, I'm pretty good at interviewing now. I know the types of questions to ask. I know how to ask the things like you were saying earlier that everybody else isn't asking. Mm -hmm. And you become that subject matter expert just by, by doing it and learning more and more about whatever subject it is that you're going after. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you primarily speak with veteran uh, nonprofit organizations and I, over your course of, of podcasting and, and these interviews, um, how can you summarize some of the struggles that these nonprofit organizations or these individuals that start these nonprofits have 
when going into starting their own business. A lot of people approach Bennett and I, and, and they know that Bennett has a nonprofit, Warrior Hall, and, and, and a lot of people are interested, or at least they've been teased, teasing around the idea of starting their own business or even their own nonprofit, but they just, they're not quite entirely sure if it's for them, if they can, if they've got enough knowledge and experience to be successful. Like, what are some things that you find as common threads amongst the folks that you interview? Well, I think for the, the people that have nonprofits and they're starting to struggle a little bit, I think a lot of that stems from them trying to work in that business instead of running that business. They become really, really good at doing what it is they're doing to provide that support to the veterans. But as far as looking at it as a company and growing it, uh, they're not there yet. And I, I think that like you've probably read Michael Gerber's book, The E-Myth Revisited. Yes. If not, highly recommend it. Yeah, great book. But talking about the difference between working on your business and working in your business <laughs> and the, the bigger organizations, the better organizations, the, one that are, the ones that are being run like a well, well-oiled machine and Team Red, White, and Blue comes to mind, they're killing it because they've got the leaders in place, they've got the processes in place for those leaders, and it's not one person trying to do all of the things. Mm. They, they've got, they have their objective, they know what it is they're going after, but then they they run it like a business and it's it's being run really well and it really shows all the way from the people that are on the staff of that organization to the people who are veterans or civilians who are showing up to the events just to hang out it shows that this organization knows what they're doing mm. yeah and i cannot i cannot stress what you just said enough i when I first got out of the army, my job was I, I was a small business owner and I owned my own landscaping company. <laughs> and of course, I, I didn't know anything about landscaping and I didn't know anything about running my own business. However, I figured out the landscaping part. I figured out how to cut grass and do retaining walls and walkways and irrigation and figured out quickly that, you know, I don't know how to drop trees and, and don't ever want to try that ever again <laughs> in my life. <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy, if you've never listened to that episode, which one? What, uh, what? It's episode twenty-eight. It's my okay. The, I'm gonna go back and listen to that one. It's it, the it's it the, it's it's the story of of me failing at business. It was my failed business, <laughs> but <sighs> but I figured out the business part, or I figured out the the labor part, the actual. This is what I do to earn money, right? In terms of the actual labor of the business, but then I would go home and I would I was like. What's an RFP? Like, how do I do estimates? What what do I do for taxes? Like, how do I work payroll? What's workers' compensation? Like, all of these business things that that you need to know to know how to do in order for a business to run smoothly. I had no clue. I had absolutely mm. no clue, and so I struggled immensely because I didn't have the knowledge, education, and or experience, or anyone else in my corner that was that knew anything about this to be able to help me out. And so that, needless to say, that business went under. And then I went to school. I got, I went to night school, got my, my mass or um, my undergrad and I continued on and got my MBA. And now I understand business and I look back and I, and now I know enough about business to look back and say, Oh my God, like what was I thinking <laughs> trying to start my own business without knowing all, you know, these things. So you're right. You got these people that start these nonprofit organizations and they have the passion, they have the drive. They know how to do the the uh, whatever's in their mind in terms of their vision. But when it comes to actually running it as a business, then it's it's tough. Right. Uh, for example, Bennett and I are, are, are recently joined as board members of a, a veteran nonprofit. And we talk with the president and he's very knowledgeable with the you know, the actual service that he's providing in his nonprofit. But when it comes to actual, the business end of things, like he doesn't really know what he's doing. And, and I'm not surprised because very few people ever just wake up one day and say, Oh, I know how to run a business. Right. Right. Um, right. And so it's something that you've got to work through, but I think you hit the nail on the head, Jeremy. And that is 
you got to realize that when you're first starting out, you may you may have to do everything yourself because you're a one man band. But there's got to come a point if you want to be successful where you've got to bring other people in. And some of those people may be smarter than you at certain things. And you've got to be OK with that. Yeah, you you actually want that. You want to surround your peop- yourself with people who are smarter than you at certain things. You want to bring on somebody who knows finances. You want to bring on a business development lead. You want to bring on these people who are the subject matter experts so that you can focus on what it is you want to do in growing that business. And you bring them all together and you ask the questions. You You don't be afraid of sounding stupid when you say, um, so how does this insurance thing work? Mm. You just, you ask the question, you look stupid, but then you learn because you have smart people in your corner who are going to tell you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so there's a, there's a the concept that I want to run by you. And that is, I've heard people say things like double down on your strengths and don't worry about your weaknesses. But I've also heard people say, you know, it's, it's good to understand your strengths, but you really need to work on improving your weaknesses. W- which camp do you fit in? I think I'm all for going for your strengths, the things that you are passionate about, the things that really drive you, because sure, you can learn about the other things, but it's not going to make them go by any easier. You know, it's not going to your day. If you're stuck doing that thing that you don't like doing that day, that eight hour day is going to seem like 80 hours. Now, if you were doing something that you're absolutely passionate about, you can go for 15 hours and still have the energy to keep going because that's your passion. That's what's driving you. Mm. So I would say you identify the things that you're not passionate about in your business and then you find people to take those on. You, you either A, automate them or B, you outsource them or C, if you absolutely have to do them yourself, you find a way to batch them together so that you're doing them all at once and knock them out and can move on to the stuff that you are passionate about. Amen. I love that. So how do you, Jeremy Paris, define success? Success is being able to follow your passion on a daily basis. For me, that's success. If I'm stuck in a job, if I'm stuck in a quote unquote cubicle, I'm not following my passion. I am not going to be happy. And no matter how much money I make, I'm still going to have those golden handcuffs on where I just can't wait until I could get out of that position or job or whatever it is. So for me to be successful, I need to be bringing in enough money to where I can do what it is I'm passionate about doing on a regular basis. And for me, whatever that thing is, it's going to be going in the direction of making the world better in some way. Every business opportunity that I go after, that is the litmus test that I pass it through is, is this going to help the world in some way? Mm, I love that, man. So what are you the most passionate about in your life right now? Right now, it's podcasting. Right now, not only, I mean, we've been talking about the Veteran Resource Podcast, and I'm absolutely passionate about helping veterans, about pointing veterans to the organizations that are out there. I want all 20,000 veterans who are leaving the military every single month. I want them to know that there's options out there, that there's, that there's these organizations that they could plug into for helping them to be leaders in their community or to, you know, help them with healing or to help them just have camaraderie or to just have fun. Like there's those organizations out there and I want all veterans to know that. But I'm also passionate just about podcasting in general. Once I started going down that road with podcasting, I also started Podcast Playground with my co-founder, Kate, also my girlfriend. Uh, But we started Podcast Playground, which is the first podcast network made just for kids. And we have all kid hosts running the shows. And so that is one of those things that you have to be passionate about it in order to do it because you're a, you're a podcaster. You can understand the amount of time that it takes to do a podcast. Oh, yeah. Imagine if you have eight and 10 year olds that, that are doing it, that are recording that you have to edit afterward and that you have to write scripts for. And 
Yeah, you have to be passionate about it to be doing that, huh? That's that's <laughs> amazing. So, is it one podcast or is it a is it a uh, you said a network? It's a network. It's a I'm network. Sure. So it's multiple children's podcasts then, right? Right. We've got the first one that came out was Wacky News, and we've got an eight year old and a ten year old who are brother and sister team, and they are bringing a, they're diving into a different news article that is cool for kids to listen to, and we at the end of every episode we put uh i think it's six different jokes wacky jokes in there and we've got the sound effects in there to make it cool and we've got background music and they're just about you know anywhere from 8 to 10 12 minutes long so it's just a nice bite-sized piece but it is really cool for the kids to listen to and then the second one we started was toothy trivia and the idea behind this is we have two episodes coming out every single day. Yes, we are insane. <laughs> two episodes coming out every single day. And the idea is that it's two minutes of trivia that kids will listen to while they're brushing their teeth to make sure that they're brushing for two minutes. And as my seven-year-old daughter can tell you, it doesn't even seem like two minutes. It seems like 30 <laughs> seconds nice. because uh, the time just flies by when they're listening to these facts. So we've been doing that one for eight weeks now, and uh, and it's been it's been getting some attention, which is pretty cool. A couple uh, news stories. In fact, there was an interview today with ten-year-old Emma, who's the host of the show, and it's it's really cool to see it all coming together. We went to DC Pod the uh, DC Pod Fest, I think it's called, yesterday, mm. and uh, there was a panel just talking about kid podcasts and so we brought the kids to the panel and we we listened to it we asked questions it was really cool but there's a lot more people that are looking at now trying to do kid podcasts it's just that nobody can figure out the secret sauce to make it work because <laughs> so you kids... gave me all kinds of ideas when yeah we talked last i was like because with my kids, oh my god! And Addie can attest; he's oh, mad. Oh yeah, they just—they're oh, all, they're always looking for uh, ways or opportunities to get on the mic, man. You know what I mean? Oh my god, yeah. it's absolute <laughs> insanity! And yeah, I got to I have to do something. I got to figure this out. Yeah, you but gotta, I, you but gotta I, do it. I really think that you know, like I said at the top of the show, podcasting is still really early in its in its development, and I think you know. Over time, you're going to see podcasting a, a, as a primary means of, of uh, media exchange. And I think it could even fall into the realm of the performing arts in, in a lot of ways. I mean, you look at some of the more popular podcasts out there, and they're, they're, a lot of them are, are dramatized. Some of them are, are – it's about storytelling. There's poetry. There's, I mean, so it's a very creative – it's more than just getting behind a microphone and talking, right? I mean, it, it can be whatever you want it to be, but it's about spreading and sharing a message. But it's also about uh, finding a way to, to be, be creative and sharing in that message. And I think bringing kids on, they're, they're the next generation of podcast podcasters and, exactly. and podcast listeners, right? Exactly. I mean, at the at the end of the day, it's almost like a backslide in in the way that we consume. Um, I mean, not not saying that like TV's dead or anything, or but I I sure really do think that terrestrial radio is on the outs. You know what I mean? It is um, between between satellite radio and podcasting or just internet radio based radio in general. It's almost like with like take serial for. Right. Or some of these other podcasts that are like they put out seasons and they like tell a story and it's like, you know, it's literally people tune in just so they can listen. It's almost like going back to like the days before there was TV and right, right, the old timey radio, in front of the radio, right, old timey radio, where there actually is like performing. Like go go listen to NPR at like eleven o'clock at night. That's that's right. that's there's like performances and stuff on that. But that stuff is getting traction again, mm -hmm. right? And and that's how you can tell that terrestrial radio is going away because every every terrestrial radio uh, station now is starting to do podcasting also. Mm, yeah, right. like we have a we have a guy. It's a it's a veteran podcast here in Syracuse. 
the guy is what started it is he's a DJ at the local uh um rate one of the local radio stations, but they're but they produce the podcast for him and the whole thing because it's like they see the value in it. And right. um, and that things are great. You know why? Because people are sick and tired of le- listening to five songs and then getting bombarded with six minutes of ads. Right. Yeah. And, well, and, 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 and people are sick of it. Why do you think DVR is so uh, you know, <laughs> popular? Because people don't watch the ads anymore. That, right. That yeah. form of media is dying. Mm-hmm. And if you look you at the noticed. stats also, if you look at the stats and you compare sales for uh, sponsor slots, if, if somebody mentions, you know, drink your Ovaltine on a radio show, it's going to have that, you know, 0.5% of people who are going to listen to that and go out and get Ovaltine. But if you've got John Lee Dumas, you know, who's got a million downloads for every episode, if you hear him say, hey, I drink Ovaltine and it's amazing, he's going to have like, you know, 20% of sales are, are going to happen for Ovaltine pretty much overnight because his crowd, they know, like, and trust him. They know right. he's not going to give me something that he himself doesn't trust or, you know, he, right. he's not going to put his name on that and screw us over. So this must be good. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's also an accessibility issue. So when you're listening to a podcast, you're either listening on your phone, you're listening on your computer and you're either sitting at work or sitting at home, right on that. Mm-hmm. And if you hear a, an ad for something and you don't know what it is, you're able most of the time, unless you're driving, you're able to look that up immediately. So it's, it's not, it's, there's no lag time. You hear it on the radio and you're like, Oh, I'll try to remember that. How many times right. have you done that? Yeah, I'll try to remember that and check it out later. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not <laughs> happen. Our attention yeah. span in this society is about, you know, a millimeter long. Right. And, uh, and, and that's something that, that also attests to is that it's that instant gratification factor. And if somebody wants it, they have a way to look at it and and do it within instance, you know. Right, so. right. And and the other thing is that with a radio station, the the ads are not run by the people who by the DJs who you're listening <laughs> to that you and like. They, mostly so, they suck. Let's yeah. be honest. So so they if that really DJ suck. if that DJ is really cool and you you really like him, but he tells you to go out and buy something, you know that it's the radio station that sold that, exactly. that sponsor slot. So yeah. you're not going to trust that that's something you're that's like, good. Whatever, man, this is all about money. And that's what exactly. It is. Yeah. And yeah. for me, I mean, I'm a, I'm about to kick off episode 65 tomorrow for, of the veteran resource podcast. I still don't have a sponsor on my show. And the reason is because I'm lining up ones that I truly know are helping veterans in mm-hmm. some way, shape or form. And I'm being selective about who I, who I'm going to let be a sponsor on the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Or, or, or products that you actually use. Yeah. Right. And exactly. Can, and, and you can vouch for, I, I know like we don't, we're the same way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think so. we're, we're in episode, this is episode, this will be episode 118 and we've only promoted two two uh products one of them is uh is audible.com because i i firmly believe in audible i listen to, i listen to i listen to it i listen to a ton of, of us, like oh my god audio yeah. Book a month. oh yeah yeah <laughs> and uh, i just i have so much because i don't have a lot of time to read and i find so much value in audiobooks and i want to share that with the audience if and not only that but if people that are listening to the podcast the chances of them listening to an audiobook are probably high um, right. and, and the other thing is uh, Mountain Up, uh, our good friend uh, over there at uh, 10th Mountain, 10th Mountain. Apparel, uh, yeah. Ry- Ryan Hunt. He is a fellow Fister Army guy, and um, and yeah, we promote his stuff because I love his hats and his stuff that he sells, and he's a veteran. And you his know, hats are the best. Oh yeah, and so yeah, to, <laughs> to your point, right? I mean, we don't want to just start slinging some stuff downrange if we're not, you know, if we're not believing it, and. Uh, so which raises the and net. your listeners, your listeners are they know that too. So right. they know when you talk about something, when you when you finally get that you know that huge sponsor that is on every single show, and you're like, no, listen, go and check these guys out. They're gonna go and check them out, yeah, because mm-hmm. they they trust that you're gonna not steer them the the wrong way. That's right. 
So you, so you're in uh, what episode sixty something you said right now? Sixty five will be tomorrow. Sixty five, and you haven't had any any um, sponsor spots yet, which is fine. I don't, I don't, I think we were past that before we started ourselves. So does that, does that mean that you're still holding down a nine to five, or have you figured out a way to monetize enough for this to be your permanent gig? Well, funny story happened. Uh, <laughs> so I was I was laid off about a month ago from the job that in the industry in the Department of Defense uh, I had been there for 16 years and so there was a lot of change happening with CSC and and they split and became CSC and CSRA and they merged with uh, another company SRA and there was a lot of stuff going on. And when it all shook out, they they looked at the fact that, okay, this is the new business model that we that we have. This is how we're running things. And so, you know, for our investors, we we're gonna make this thing extremely profitable for you. And so we're going to, you know, start tighten tightening things up. And, you know, we're gonna get rid of these types of slots and add these other types of slots. And so there was a lot of change that was happening and Anybody in any industry, this probably sounds familiar because this happens in business. It's just a business thing. And so my number came up in the, I think it was the third or the fourth round of layoffs. And, and they said, all right, you're getting laid off. Your position's going away. And, and I had this, this euphoric feeling, <laughs> ah, my golden handcuffs are finally broken. You know, they, they yeah, kicked man. me out of the nest and now it's time for me to start learning to fly. Uh, and so, yeah, I got a, a severance package that I started living off of. And uh, now things are, well, I don't want to jinx anything, but things are starting to look pretty good as far as what the next steps are for bringing in money. Nice. Now, but, is that, is that yeah. podcast related or is it completely separate? It's all going to be podcast related and it's all going to be in ways that it's going to help improve the world. So Hell yes. uh, looking at looking at sponsors that are for the veteran resource podcast that are doing really good things for veterans and bringing them on and really lifting them up instead of just saying, you know, go here and, and buy this. I'm going to be actually diving in and doing what nobody else is doing and, and interviewing you know, different members that, that work for them and finding out, you know, how do you feel as a veteran? What, what is the company doing for you? And, you know, why is this company better than any other company for veterans and, and things like that? Uh, look at you. Look going, at you. going a different sleeping. angle instead of just saying, go buy a product. Hmm. I want, I want my audience to know that this company worthwhile company just themselves. And on top of that, they've got these killer products. So, that's what I'm looking at for that. We're looking at getting sponsors for uh, Podcast Playground. And we're also going into the app market because, mm -hmm. because when you're dealing with kids, kids don't know podcasting. Yeah. Kids know apps. Yeah, so, you know, it, it, you bring up a good point. And it's not, I get what you're saying with kids, but it's, it's not just kids. I, I find a lot of people... Um, like, you know, it's easy to kind of group people into demographics, right? Kids don't know what podcasting is. And then you got people that are too old that don't know what podcasting is. And then you got people that are, that are, you know, you start segmenting and, and start putting reasons to why people don't know about pod But what I'm finding is in general, regardless of the age or demographic, there's just a lot of people out there that just don't know what podcasting is. I mean, what have you been able to do to kind of help educate those that just don't aren't podcast listeners right now, but it isn't because they don't like them. It's just because they don't know about them. Well, you would be surprised at because we're podcasters and we're surrounded by it every day. You'd be surprised how many people say podcast. What's a podcast? Mm -hmm. And these oh, are yeah. people who a might lot. be technology savvy and everything. And they're like, podcast, what's, What's that? Or I, I'll tell them about it and I'll send them there and they will send me a message and say, you know, I clicked on the play button, but the video, it was broken and yeah. the video didn't come up. And <laughs> like, uh, uh, it's 
it's um it's audio it's uh, not uh, yeah. a video so, <laughs> oh so yeah there's, there's uh there's definitely a lot of education that has to happen around podcasting in order for it to keep growing. Mm-hmm. And and I don't know if it's the name podcasting if you know maybe we chose the wrong one when we all clung to something when they were first trying to figure out what to call it. But uh yeah, it it seems to once somebody finds it and, and somebody hears the first one they're almost instantly hooked because right. yeah, I, I almost just call it a radio show, frankly, and to, especially to people that, you know, are going to be like, what the, what's a podcast. It's like, you great, know, those intrinsically what, so just say it's a radio show. Yeah. That's a great idea. It's an internet radio show. You can always just call it internet radio, mm-hmm. internet radio show. Yeah. And there's even you people can take that, that one. I should, I, I need to trademark that quick. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's like, they're like, there's people I talk to and they ask about what I do. And I say, oh, we got this podcast. You should check it out. And they're like, oh, yeah. I'm not like, oh, yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. Well, what's it called? No, well, I like, I'll be, I'll you have be, no idea. I'll be talking to them in, in person. I'll say, yeah, just go on your, uh, go on the, the podcast app on your phone and I'll show you where to download it. And they're like, um, oh, I don't have that app on my phone. I'm like, do you have an iPhone? They're like, yes. I'm like, it comes with it automatically. Exactly. And people, people don't, people don't <laughs> even don't realize do, they don't know. No, they don't know. So that's been why that's right, been right. Our, some of our struggles is just the, is just educating those uh, about podcasts. And, you know, it just, it's going to take, a lot of us to help spread the word and get people to share. And that's what I say to my listeners when they, you know, if you find what we're saying valuable, share it. But sometimes sharing it means you got to actually grab your friend's phone out of their no. hands. And, and and that's what I was just going to say. I didn't you know? want to cut you off. I, I've literally uh, people at work and people that I meet now, I'm like, uh, no, really you should listen. And, and, and I'm like, and I straight up ask them, do you know, what a podcast is, or do you know how to access a podcast on iTunes? And I'll actually show them, like, because it literally takes two minutes. Yeah. So you just show them, you boom, and you go, look, you can look up everything. You're a hunter, boom. Look at all these hunting podcasts. Yeah. yeah. You're a fisherman, boom. I mean, you just gotta, you, you literally have to, it's about educating. And if you don't educate people, how the hell are they gonna ever know? It's like, it's like us as veterans. How are civilians going to understand us if we don't tell them yes. what they need to know? And that's right. It's all yeah. goes along the same. And that's, and that's the thing, too, Jeremy. I don't know if you get this, but um, for Change Your POV, even though it's not necessarily just veterans, we do interview non veterans um, that are passionate about the veteran community and transition, things like that. But, but the number one feedback that we get on this show are from non veterans telling us that they really enjoy the show because it helps them understand veterans better. And, huh. and I'll be honest with you, that's probably, that was something that was totally unplanned by the way for, by us, but that's, that's a result that we find very encouraging because it's one thing to educate the veterans about how to be successful in the civilian world. But we're finding that in order for veterans to be, as successful as as they potentially can be it also requires the education of what we call non-veterans we don't really like to use the word civilians because it sounds derogatory but it's really the non-veterans that also need to be educated along with veterans because you you could be a very successful veteran but then you join the corporate world the corporate america and you're working for a non-veteran boss and you're working with non-veteran you know, coworkers that don't understand where you're coming from and how you think and how you tick. And so finding ways to close that gap and to share or at least allow non-veterans a peek behind the curtain, so to speak, it's been, it's been uh, something that, like I said, we didn't plan on, but it's been the most common response that we get when we ask for feedback or even when we aren't soliciting <laughs> feedback from the show. Yeah. You hear us say non-veteran, and we're not trying to be all politically correct or anything. Right. We really don't <laughs> give a rat's ass. A, a lot of it, though, it's a lot of it comes down to is just trying to not be as exclusionary. Yeah. So mm-hmm. calling a non-veteran a non-veteran versus a civilian, it's it, it's not as, uh, uh, you know, divisive. Yeah. So right. we need, because at the end of the day, we need the non-veterans to succeed 
in the in the in the world because guess what? There's a lot more of them than there are of us. Right. Okay. Yeah, and that's so that's where so uh, there's if organizations. You can them, right. If you can co-opt them, it's great. Yeah, and there's there's organizations out there that their primary mission is to do exactly that: is to inform civilians about what it's like to be a veteran, so that they can they can learn. Like the Telling Project is one that comes to mind with right. Jonathan Way. I, I was a member. I was up on stage with the Telling Project when they came here to Baltimore. And you're basically taking veterans and putting them up on stage to tell their own story, but in a really cool way where you're acting it out instead of just standing up there in front of a microphone and talking, mm. you're, you're acting like, out it's the like whole thing. Arts in the armed forces with Adam driver. Right. I mean, right. Adam driver is right. Um, of course our, yeah. our, our, you know, resident Sith Lord. <laughs> uh, it's like what I like to call him now, but I, I'm going to that show on Broadway tomorrow. Um, awesome. And uh, that will, uh, you know, it's per- pretty awesome. You get these guys that, you know, veterans that have written these stories and you get people to get up there and act them. And, you know, it's just like that reading and the poetry oh, yeah. and the, the stage acting and all that stuff that, you know what, frankly, as veterans, We do that every day that we're in the military surrounded by a bunch of people smoking and joking. You're, you're, and you're telling a story. You're telling a sea story. You're telling a, uh, you know, a, oh no shit. There I was. That's, (laughs) that's, that's acting, man. That's freaking, that's such an outlet that I don't think is a lot of veterans don't realize that they have is that, is that ability to communicate. Mm -hmm. Uh, so And and that's one of the things that when the telling project, when I got invited to go and talk to them, it's like they interview a bunch of people to to find out who they're going to have for that show. And I was working with the veteran artist program and we were producing it. So I had already seen a bunch of these and helped to, to, you know, behind the scenes to work on a bunch of these. But then for this one, BR said, why don't you go and, and try out for it? And I was like, eh, I don't have a story. I mean, I was 10, I was in 10 years. I got out in 2000. So before any fighting happened, I never went any place interesting. Like my overseas assignment was Alaska, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, right. I'm like, I don't have a story. And I kept for, for 10 years or so up until then, from the time that I got out until I went and talked to the telling project, I believed that I didn't have a story to tell. And when I sat down with, um, with Max, who is directing the Telling Baltimore, he, or they, they started asking questions. And it was all of these questions. And it's, you, you start off, and it's the normal questions. You're answering where you've been and what, you're, what you've done and things like that. But then he'll take you down a rabbit hole. Oh, wait, let's back up a second. You mentioned this. Well, tell me a little bit more about that. And it's like, oh, well, it was nothing. I just did this, this. Okay. All right. And just keeps pulling you down further and further. <laughs> and then by the time it was done, by the time this interview was done, he said, so do you think you have a story now? <laughs> and I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, That's yeah. awesome. Huh. And that goes back to kind of what I said earlier about a lot of times veterans don't They underestimate their value. They don't think that they have a story. They don't think that they have anything to offer. They don't think they have any value that they can present to somebody else. And the truth is everyone has value. Everyone has a story. Everyone can contribute in some way. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely correct. That's awesome. Well, man, dude, I could talk with you for hours, but uh, we are completely exhausted our time, and I want to be respectful of your time. Thanks so much, Jeremy, for coming on the show and sharing uh, with the Change Your POV audience uh, about you and your story and what you've got going on. And uh, I'm going to have all the links to everything we talked about in the show notes page for this episode. How can people contact you and, and find out more about what you've got going on? Well, you can go over to veteranresourcepodcast.com and you can find all of the episodes there. Right at the top, in the very top bar, you'll see the newsletter. If you want to get plugged in and find out about things as they come up, you could just throw your email address in there. If you wanted to shoot me an email, I'm jeremy at veteranpodcast.com. Nice and short, had to buy that URL. 
Nice. And uh, and if you have children and you want to get them into checking out some podcasts, highly recommend you go over to podcastplayground.com and check that out. That's awesome, man. Thank you very much, sir, for coming on. And uh, keep doing what you're doing. I'm definitely going to uh, keep following what you're doing and uh, just building and cultivating our newly found network and relationship hint hint for veterans listening this can be done this is how it's done this is how you do it <laughs> um and i just really hey thanks for what you do man i really do appreciate it, it does make it, it makes my life easier when there's other people like you out there doing what you do um spread the word spread the message get people uh actively engaged with whatever they're passionate about because you know i'm i just get really tired of everybody that's sitting on top of the mountain screaming down on everybody about what they can and should do. But when you ask them what they're doing to, to change the world, they, they say nothing. Right. So, um, right. it's about, it's about a taking action and, uh, being an action taker and finding a way if it seems impossible or insurmountable, figuring out a way to get it done. I mean, we did in the military and there's no difference now when we're out. I mean, uh, that's just the way we should attack things. So absolutely. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate the opportunity to come on the show. This has been great. Thanks for listening to Change Your POV Podcast with Eddie Lazary. Check out more content by going to changeyourpov.com. And remember, your ability and willingness to change your point of view will open doors of opportunity. 